I have the pleasure of speaking on the AFLIC CCG, the things you should uh, clear. Okay. I'm going to keep this a really practical talk and give you 10 key messages based on the international recommendations of what you as sports physicians should try and clear. So cardiovascular related sun death, although rare, is a leading cause of mortality in athletes during sports and exercise. Majority of these disorders associated with an increased risk of sudden cardiac death, such as the cardiomyopathies or the primary electrical disorders, may be suggested by changes on the 12 lead ECG. The visibility of these events amongst athletes, the number of life years lost for, in all young individuals falling victims to sudden cardiac death from silent but yet sinister disease has led to several initiatives in identifying individuals who may be at risk, including mandatory cardiac evaluation in sport, voluntary charity-based cardiac assessment in the young, such as cardiac risk in the young, assessment of symptomatic young individuals in clinics, and detection following pedigree assessment of first-degree relatives. <clears throat> the interpretation of the athlete's ECG requires careful analysis to identify phys uh, physiological changes associated with athletic training from findings suggestive of pathology. And so in, uh, in early 2017, the international recommendations on ECG interpretation in athletes was published, and this provides a practical approach for identifying ECG abnormalities for conditions associated with sudden cardiac death. And for the purpose of my talk, I'm going to focus on the green box, and there are uh, two other speakers who will focus on the yellow and the red box. So regular participation in sport, regular and long-term participation in sport for more than 48 hours of intensive activity is associated with unique electrical changes um, so it, that reflect on an enlarged cardiac chamber size, such as left ventricular hypertrophy, incomplete right bundle branch block, and an increased vagal tone, such as sinus bradycardia, sinus arrhythmia, and early repolarization. The ECG changes are influenced by a variety of factors, including age, sex, ethnicity, type of sport, intensity of sport, and these ECG changes are regarded as normal physiological adaptations to exercise that do not require further evaluation in the absence of symptoms or a family history of cardiac disease. Now, I'm going to take you through 10 key messages, and I'm going to show you ECG examples, and I'd like you to think when I show you these examples, reflect whether you would clear the athlete on the examples I have shown you in the absence of symptoms or family history. So message one is voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. This is an ECG of a 23-year-old asymptomatic rower with voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. And although there are several criteria for LVH, the Sokolon Leo voltage criteria is most commonly used. That is the sum of, our, sum of the S wave in V1, I don't know if I've got a pointer, and the uh, sum of the S wave in V1 and the R wave in V5 or V6, whichever is the largest, being more than 3.5 millivolts or more than 35 millimeters. All ECG criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy correlate poorly with uh, um, left ventricular wall thickness or LV mass on imaging studies. And uh, these are also influenced by a variety of factors, including male sex, athletic activity, and younger age being associated with a higher QRS voltage. There is one caveat, though that isolated left ventricular hypertrophy is identified in fewer than 2% of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So all the clearing athletes with isolated LVH may not identify a small minority E with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, these individuals will have a milder phenotype and are at low arrhythmogenic risk. So message one, isolated soclonium voltage criteria for LVH is common and does not warrant further evaluation in the absence of symptoms or a family history of cardiac disease. Message two, this is an ECG of a 20-year-old asymptomatic soccer player with right ventricular hypertrophy. This is identified, this is fairly common, and it's identified in up to 13% using the Soclon Leon index of the R wave in V1 and the S wave in V5 or 6, whichever is the largest, being greater than 10.5 millivolts. And again, the presence of voltage criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy uh, correlates poorly with increased right ventricular wall thickness on imaging studies. <clears throat> 
So message two, isolated right ventricular hypertrophy is considered as part of the normal spectrum of ECG findings in athletes and in the absence of other ECG or clinical markers of pathology do not warrant further evaluation. Message three, incomplete right bundle branch block. So this is an ECG of a 19-year-old asymptomatic soccer player with um, uh, incomplete right bundle branch block, which is an RSR pattern in V1 with a QRS duration of less than 120 milliseconds. And some studies have shown that the delay in the RV conduction in athletes is due to an RV remodeling with increased cavity, si cavity size. Um, <clears throat> So message three, incomplete right bundle branch block represents a phenotype of cardiac adaptation to exercise and in the absence of symptoms and again family history of cardiac disease does not warrant further evaluation. Message four, this is a 22 year old uh, asymptomatic rower with early repolarization which is defined as elevation of the QRS ST segment called the J point as I've pointed out in the arrows of more than or equal to 0.1 millivolt, and this is associated with late QRS slurring or notching called the J-wave, um, which is often seen in the inferior and or lateral leads. This is more prevalent in athletes, young individuals, males, and associated with black ethnicity. In fact, in these examples, I've shown you J-point elevation, the concave ST segment, and PQT waves, which are uh, features of early repolarization are seen in up to 45% of white athletes and 60 to 90% of black athletes. There have been some studies that have shown that uh, in survivors of cardiac arrest that there is an association of early repolarization and the increased risk of uh, ventricular fibrillation. And I don't really want to go into it in too much detail, but Hazika demonstrated early repolarization pattern in the inferior of the lateral leads in 31% of cases with aborted idiopathic VF. Um, Tikkanan looked at middle-aged individuals and showed that if you had a J-point elevation associated with horizontal or, or descending ST segments in the inferior leads, that was associated with an increased risk of arrhythmic events. Whereas if you had a upsloping ST segment, then that was associated with a benign prognosis. So message four, early repolarization pattern accompanied by the concave ST segment is identified in highly trained athletes and in the absence of symptoms and again family history does not warrant further evaluation. What about repolarization changes in black athletes? So over the past decade, um, um, ethnicity has been a major determinant of cardiac adaptation to exercise and and uh, black athletes exhibit um, uh, a higher prevalence of ECG anomalies, including repolarization changes. In this study by Dr. Papadakis, our chair, he looked at 904 black athletes and demonstrated that 13% of the black athletes had J-point elevation, convex ST segments, followed by T-wave inversion. And to the novice, uh, the second strip could be mistaken as an anterior myocardial infarction. The third strip could be mistaken for a Brugada phenotype pattern. And the fourth and fifth strips could be a, uh, mistaken for ARVC. And that's why we're here today to learn. <clears throat> so message five, T-wave inversion in leads V1 to V4 is present in up to 13% of black athletes and it's preceded by J-point elevation and convex ST segment elevation. It's regarded as part of the black athlete's heart in the absence of other features of cardiomyopathy does not require further evaluation. What about the juvenile pattern? So T-wave inversion in the anterior precordial leads may be regarded as a normal, normal pattern in adolescent white athletes. And studies have shown that the juvenile pattern is uh, present in 10 to 15 percent in white adolescent athletes aged between 12 and 14 years. It's identified in 2.5 percent between the age groups of uh, 14 and 15 years. And T wave inversion beyond V2 in white athletes uh, is rare. 
So message six, the juvenile ECG pattern, that is T-wave inversion in these V1 to V3, or even biphasic T-waves, is acceptable up until the age of 16 years, whereas T-wave inversion beyond V2 after the age of 16 in white athletes requires further evaluation. Message seven, uh, sinus bradycardia is defined as a heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute, and it's identified in up to 80% of individuals. Here I've shown you an example uh, from an elite marathon runner with profound sinus bradycardia, and this is due to an increased vagal tone. And this should resolve with the onset of exercise. So you should, you should identify an increase in heart rate. Um, first degree... First degree block is identified in up to 7.5% of athletes and it's defined as the prolongation of the PR interval by more than 200 uh, milliseconds and this, ref this reflects in a delay in the AV nodal conduction in athletes due to either an increased vagal activity or some intrinsic changes within the AV, uh, within, within the AV node. And again, this should resolve with the onset of exercise. If you're screening your athletes who demonstrate uh, a prolongation of the PR interval, get them to exercise on the spot, bring up their heart rate and redo their ECG. Message nine, junctional escape rhythm. This is an ECG of a 28-year-old asymptomatic Caucasian handball player who demonstrates a junctional escape where the QRS complexes are occurring at a faster rate than the resting P waves of the sinus rate, which is usually slower in athletes due to an increased vagal activity. The RR intervals are regular and the QRS complexes are narrow unless there's a bundle branch block. And again, this should resolve with the onset of exercise. Message 10, Mobitz type 1 Wenke back block. This is an ECG of an asymptomatic it's cyclist where, who demonstrates where, where you've got prolongation of the PR interval followed by a non-conducted um, P wave with no QRS complex. The following PR interval is of a shorter duration after the drop beat compared to the PR interval prior to the drop beat. Um, and again, this reflects a higher degree of uh, disturbance in the AV nodal conduction compared to first degree AV block. Uh, it's, we often identify this in highly trained endurance athletes and one-to-one -one conduction should return on, with the onset of exercise. So conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, sudden cardiac death is rare in athletes but is a leading cause of mortality during sport. Interpretation of the athlete's ECGE it requires one, one to have the ability to differentiate physiological changes which I have shown you today from pathological or changes which require further investigations. Uh, we've got the uh, brilliant international guidelines who are uh, available to us to guide us when we're assessing these athletes and today I've presented the normal ECG parameters in the green box, which in the absence of symptoms and a family history do not warrant further evaluation.